वेलकम बैक टू द एन पी टी एल कोर्स स्कैनिंग टेक्नोलॉजी एंड वैल्यू एडिशन ऑफ सी फूड इन टूडे सेशन विल बी कंटिन्यूंग विद द स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर्स फॉर सी फूड स्कैनिंग एंड वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट नेशनल स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड डिफरेंट इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड्स इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट जी एम पीज एस ओ पीज एंड एस एस ओ पीज एंड वी हैड स्टार्टड विद द एच एस सी सी पी वी हैड सीन डिफरेंट टर्म्स Uh, and their definitions uh, and how these are important in the HSCCP plan. And uh, in today's class, we'll be starting with the different HSCCP steps and different principles. So all together, we have twelve steps and seven principles. And let's see one by one in each in detail. So first, we have to uh, conduct an hazard analysis, understand what are the different hazards. Does it contain any biological hazard? Does it contain any physical hazard or chemical hazard so we have to uh, understand the hazards and uh, determine the ccps what are the critical points uh, and we have to identify the critical points and then set a critical control point and then set a critical limit and after critical li limit has been set we have to monitor it regularly see that it is not deviating if it is deviating then we have to take corrective actions we have to find solutions for it and if again after taking the corrective actions it need to be verified it need to be checked and recorded it means that there will be a documentation record keeping for all the activities that are being done in the plant so these seven principles are very important and before we go into the hazup there should be a team to take care of the hazup so this hazup team will have people from char they may have people from quality production then laboratory and then it will they will take a product into consideration so if it is scanned product that for example can sardine in oil so the product has to be described what is it can sardine in vegetable oil are you going to eat it direct as such or again modify it so intended use need to be mentioned and then construct a flow chart so this is the flow chart yeah uh, this is again a canned sardine in oil so you have to give the exact steps that will be done for the canning of the product and what are the other by products and other ingredients which will be added at each step this need to be mentioned and given in detail and clearly it should be given so we have to define the flow chart also and then verify the flow chart on site the flow chart might be prepared in an office but then it has to be verified after going to the production site so they have to go to the production site the team has to go to the production site they have to see that the whatever steps has been mentioned in the flow chart it is it is done exactly in the same way at the floor so everything has then we follow the same hazup principles so if this is the flow chart for uh, canned sardine in oil and suppose let's say this uh, the the critical point is sterilization and uh, in this place if it is sterilization then we have to develop a decision tree that is a critical control point decision tree and we have to ask questions at each step so the first question will be do preventive measures exist for hazard if there is uh, yes then we go to the next step so likewise we have to prepare a ccp if there is if is the answer is no then is control necessary do we have to adopt adopt any control and if it's it says the answer is yes then we modify it and the process is will modify if the answer is no then it is not a ccp so we have to ask questions at each step and if it is yes again it has to be answered and in this way we prepare a decision tree and based on this we identify the ccps for example it may, if it is a sterilization process we will ask if preventive measures can exist for this hazard then yes does this eliminate or reduce the hazard yes so what is the preventive measure so this is the crit critical control point so we just have to modify the temperature and time and it will become a ccp here so uh, this is an example uh, this is a canned tuna so let's see a reception is an is a ccp we have metal detection as another ccp heat processing and cooling and dry so there are four ccps in the canning of tuna and tuna being a scombroid fish it may have high amounts of histamine which may lead to scombroid poisoning so the the raw material it should have low levels of histamine and it should be below 50 ppm again uh, it should not contain heavy metals and mercury poisoning should not be there so again it should be below 8 p 0.8 ppm 
and histamine levels can be brought down if we can prevent the microbial growth or microbial contamination and generally this is done by reducing the temperature. So if it is frozen fish, the temperature should be below 18 degree, minus 18 degree centigrade and if it is fresh fish that is going to be used for developing the canned tuna, then the temperature of this uh, fresh fish should be 0 degree centigrade. So at the reception point, we have to ensure that this is, these parameters are being maintained. So has a chemical test need to be done to see the level of histamine poisoning and we have to record the temperatures of the frozen, that is the receiving material temperature need to be recorded and mentioned. Again at the reception point, since it is a canned product, we will be requiring can and it should meet the specifications of the consumers. So the supplier must provide a guarantee that the cans in compliance with the requirement of the consumers. Uh, so we have to set the critical limits, that is if it is histamine at the reception level, it should be below 50 ppm. And once the limits has been set at this critical control point, then it has to be monitored. So we have to monitor the temperature, we have to do visual uh, inspection, we have to again check the histamine and mercury level that would be done by chemical methods, um, chemical and analytical methods and again we need uh, guarantee from the supplier that uh, the can, they, they are in compliance with the requirements. Again, we can do visual examination. So these come under monitoring. And suppose this does not meet the requirement, whatever limits has been set, the, there is a failure, they, it is not in compliance, then we have to take corrective action. Suppose if it is the problem is with the can, immediately the supplier has to be informed or we have to change the can. And if the histamine level is above uh, 50 ppm, then immediately we have to see that if cutting any preventive measure that we can be adopted that may uh, bring down the histamine level that has to be done. If it is too high, then we have to reject the product. Again, defective cans, these can be uh, rejected and the suppliers need to be informed regarding the defects. So such corrective actions need to be taken. And at the metal detection, it detects the metal. So any uh, metal impurities. It should not because metal can again pose as a physical threat. So it may harm the human beings or it may harm the consumers. So there should not be uh, any metal in the food. So absence of uh, metal pieces, that is the critical limit. And it has to be monitored. Uh, so the metal detector, it need to be cleaned and checked regularly. And it gives the correct details of the product. While monitoring any defect is observed, it need to be repaired, it need to be calibrated, it need to be fixed and the machine should continue working during the production. The next step is heat processing. This is very important. This is heat sterilization and in during heat processing canning, we concentrate on the Clostridium botulinum bacteria. So the temperature of uh, Clostridium botulinum is 121 degree centigrade uh, for 15 seconds. So that temperature and time is very important. So that uh, we have to see that at the during the heat processing step, these critical limits are being maintained and the organism is being killed. And uh, periodic checking should be there to see that the retort temperature is correct and uh, it is recorded properly and also for the proper duration of time and all records need to be, if anything is not working or anything is uh, not in, the, in, in line with the critical limits, then immediately corrective actions need to be taken. So we have to maintain the time temperature requirements. So we have to take the time temperature requirements need to be taken into consideration and we have to monitor it and calibrate the thermometers. Also we can use uh, automatic recorders. So these are the corrective actions which need to be taken at this step and heat processing is a very important step in canning industry. Then after heat processing, the organism, Clostridium, since it is a spore forming bacteria, it goes into the spore stage and the moment it gets the right temperature, right environment, it will start growing. So therefore, we cannot bring down the temperature slowly after retorting, after, from 121 to 37 degrees centigrade, we cannot bring, bring it down slowly. This will allow the bacteria to, to come out and again grow, so again multiply. So we give cold shock, that is cooling and drying process. So again, that is very important. So in cooling, the water comes in contact with the container, with the food contact surface. 
again the chlorine level should be correct we have to specify the level and this should be measurable level and the critical limit is set as 0.5 mg per liter so this need to be monitored regularly chlorine has to be checked for the cooling water and there should be uh, designated people who will do this thing this testing re at regular intervals and if the chlorine level is not to the mark if it is not to the limit then it has to be added and actions need to corrective actions need to be taken as and when required and has a this is an accepted management system for food processing companies to ensure food safety and uh, the practical requirement for all food canneries and need to be inspected and approved by a local competent authority and this has been set in eu regulation european regulation 852.04 and uh, in the implementation and maintenance of hazap is very important then codex also uh, defines ccp as a process step at which the control can be applied and it's essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to the acceptable level so again ccp is very important uh, even codex is giving uh, equal importance to ccp and uh, they have defined it as a process step so where we can eliminate or prevent the contamination we can ensure the safety of the food product so it can be or it can be reduced to an acceptable limit suppose there is a, it cannot be eliminated then we have to bring down the level of the hazard and to be identified as a ccp there must be a control applied at the process step which is operative in real time we cannot have an imaginary control point it should be operative it should be real time and we should be able to do it in actually suppose we say that the sterilization temperature is the critical point then we should be able to monitor it regular intervals so that is also very important now ccp there are some uh, ccps which are generic to the production for example double seaming the can should be double seamed so that there is no leakage it is intact then sterilization it is again generic without this it is not possible so again it is a ccp then sanitization of the cooling water it should be portable water it should be well chlorinated it should not contain any contaminants and it should not pass contaminants to the food again metal, metal detection so these are some four steps uh, which are generic and these are also ccps uh, for canned fish now the standards for canned fish these are mentioned in codex and uh, the number is also given here so there are some uh, only few products we have pacific salmon uh, shrimps tuna in water or oil then we have canned crab meat sardine and sardine like products and mackerel and codex uh, and their specifications are given and us federal again uh, code of federal standards are there federal regulations they also give standards for certain food products certain canned products like pacific salmon tuna and here the 21 title 21 it stands for food and drugs and cfr stands for code for federal regulations 161 stands for part so under this we get only fish and shellfish and 190 is the sub part so if you look here it is mentioned here so it is ecfr title 21 is food and drugs and under this we have part 161 that is fish fish and shellfish so the code will be written like this and here we have in the cfr we have uh, standards for pacific salmon tuna and wet pack shrimp in transparent and non-transparent containers and again there are uk codes um, for food canned food products and here these are the different products which are described there in the standard so we have mackerel fillets in tomato sauce mackerel fillets in oil and brine and we also have their specifications so if you refer these things you will get the details of these uh, products and their standards and apart from this the companies can also have their own brand for domestic sales and this should not be clubbed with a domestic market and uh, international market or the export market it should not be mixed then uh, the label should be very clear it should contain all the specifications and should be retailer specific it should be trader specific and it should include the points like product name species can size it should have uh, the net weight drain weight and uh, then information recipe information any allergen ingredients that are used then if it is gmo for example if you are using rice or you are using bt cotton or you are using any gmo products brinjal then you have to give the gmo statements 
in fish it is not there so you don't have to go for this but then again flow chart for manufacturing operations ccps it need not be mentioned in the label but uh, when we uh, prepare the standards all these things need to be given and we also need uh, assurances from the suppliers also that they are not providing gmo products so and again the chemical parameters the nutritional information physical sensory characteristics all these parameters need to be recorded and given in detail in the standards or the records then uh, health benefits uh, of the product can also be mentioned on the product uh, it can be in the put in the label there sometimes we can use the logos also and uh, ingredients what we are using they should also be follow the companies who are supplying the ingredients they also need to follow the hsccp or quality management system and also it should be uh, recognized by global food safety initiatives so these are some of the, the standards at national and international level that we follow generally for uh, canning or it can be any food product at the plant level at the personal level at the manufacturing level so at each process we have to follow the standards and this need to be done with complete dedication to ensure the safety of the food product so uh, we have come to the end of uh, sops and in the previous classes we had discussed about gmps that is good manufacturing practices what are the different criteria or areas where gmps has to be adopted and what are the different actions that need to be taken we had also seen what are the sops ssops and uh, hscp and iso 9000 which has role on in maintaining the food safety and ensuring the food quality so uh, these sops standard operating procedures these are generally adopted to ensure the quality and safety of the food and it should not cause any risk to the humans because ultimately it is reaching to the human beings as a food product so food should be safe for the consumers so thank you